I want to get to the app in a moment, but um, the antibody test uh, did make some news a few weeks ago. Got a lot of people excited about the possibility of being able to do something like this at scale, at least in California. Can you talk about what we know about the test so far in terms of scale and efficiency? Antibody testing is going to be one important component as we look at when the shelter in place restrictions and when the social distancing guidelines uh, that we're working with today, when those can be relaxed some and when we can get back towards a more normal state of affairs. What antibody testing does is it screens for an immune response resulting from either exposure to or infection with the virus. Now, it's important to remember that an immune response, that is the presence of antibodies, does not in and of itself mean that there's immunity to infection. It means that the immune system has seen the virus and mounted a response. Therefore, antibody testing gives us an indication for individuals as to who may have been exposed and therefore developed a response. It also provides an important piece of information for policymakers to know the prevalence of an immune response in a population. In parallel with the antibody testing, there will also be studies done to determine if the antibodies are what we call neutralizing. That is whether or not the antibodies can actually prevent an infection. And I'm very proud of my colleagues in Stanford Medicine who have been at the forefront in developing both a diagnostic test, an RT-PCR, to identify the virus and now to identify and implement an antibody test. Right. Uh, I think I, I'm read uh, 500 samples a day, uh, and you hope to scale that up quickly. Um, how, how many could you end up doing potentially as we got into the summer? And is there any reason to think that the laws of immunity are different with COVID-19 than with prior viruses? We hope to be able to scale up to about 1,000 patients a day in, um, in, in our delivery system, in our test. Now, it's important to note that th- there are other programs, other laboratories that are developing comparable tests. And this is a good thing because we need to roll this out broadly across the United States. So I think we can expect to see the commercial labs developed, uh, these so-called ELISA-based antibody tests, and other institutions like Stanford as well. That testing, coupled with rapid identification of people who are infected uh, by testing them rapidly and then, and then quarantining them and identifying their contacts, that's going to be an important step as we start to get back towards a more normal work environment and norm, more normal social interactions. But, Dr. Uh, Dean Minard, haven't there been a lot of accuracy questions about some of these antibody tests? I think in the U.K., you know, that they were going to test everyone, and then they deemed that they weren't good enough to actually put into practice. Have you tested the accuracy of yours? Absolutely, and it's a very good point. There are many commercially available kits uh, that can be obtained from a variety of different sources, Most of them have not, as of today, been validated by the FDA. I suspect that that will occur in the future. Our test is being done in a certified laboratory uh, through processes and procedures that have previously been vetted by the FDA. And so a lot of of proof and uh, testing went into uh, the process of uh, developing the test and then rolling it out. So we do feel confident with our test. Now, it's important to note that all of these antibody tests are, are going to have to be perfected over time and will have to have the benefit of feedback, of, of knowing other indications of infection. Uh, but we're very confident with our test it's been done with the highest levels of standards um, and that it is accurate. Dr. Minor, final question here, uh, going in a bit of a different direction, relying on your long history as an educator and somebody who is also provost, for example, at Johns Hopkins. Um, how should we be viewing the ability of universities like your own to reopen in the fall? What's it going to take in your mind for that to happen, and how are you thinking about it? Lots of discussion. It's, it's an extremely important topic. I think we just have to know more. We, we have to gather as much information as we can in the, in the coming weeks. Uh, but you're right, particularly for undergraduates uh, in a living situation that involves dormitories, um, shared restrooms, Uh, that's an environment in which the virus can spread rapidly. And that's why Stanford and many other institutions across the United States, when COVID-19 began to spread, 
uh, did elect to move to an online curriculum. I can't predict what the decision will be for the fall quarter, the fall semester here at Stanford or around the country, but you can rest assured that a lot of people are studying this in a real-time way uh, to make the very best decision ensuring the health of our students.